Hello NASCAR fans, I'm Chris Terrell, I'm here for RotoPros.com to bring you my weekly daily fantasy NASCAR post-qualifying picks video. Before getting into the picks, if you're not a RotoPros member yet, make sure to go over to RotoPros.com, click that yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner, and this week using promo code NASCAR you can get 50% off of a weekly monthly subscription, which gives you access to all of our premium content. We cover NFL, NHL, NBA, NASCAR, PGA, MLB starting in two weeks. We cover soccer. Pretty much if there's a DFS sport out there played on DraftKings and FanDuel, we can cover it. It also gives you access to our members-only community chat. We've got a bu bunch of different channels set up here for all the different sports. For NASCAR, I've put in a couple of the top news people in the sport who follow along track to track. They're there every single week. They're in the pits. They're in the garages. They're talking to drivers. They're talking to engineers. They're talking to crew chiefs. Best way to get the most information all in one spot here in our Rotor Pros community chat. Sign up today, you're not going to be disappointed. With that, let's jump into this week's picks. This week, we've got the O'Reilly Auto Parts 500 from Texas Motor Speedway. Something different. Uh, it's a one and a half mile track. Um, the one thing that is different here, in 2017, it went through a repave. They took away some banking in turns one and two. It's now at 20 degrees. Turns three and four are at 24 degrees. Um, creates a little bit of a problem for teams, crew chiefs, um, when setting up the car. You can usually be good in one end of the track, but not in the other. A lot of talk this week so far, uh, radio interviews from TV and stuff throughout practice and qualifying, is that turns one and two is going to present the biggest problem for teams, um, being a little bit flatter there. So we're going to be paying attention to that a little bit as we uh, get into the race and see who who makes the right adjustments into their car. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go through the cheat sheet. We're going to look at my core plays um, with this being the third race of the season with the full package, Las Vegas and Auto Club Speedway were the other two where we've got the air ducts on the front of the car. We've got the tapered spacer reducing the horsepower to 550 horsepower and uh, we've got the that rear drag there as well creating some uh, downforce on the track so we've got the full package here so what i'm going to do is not only look at season um the the six races that we've seen so far in the season how how drivers have done looking at intermediate tracks mile and a half tracks how guys have done um, as well as how guys have done on the atlanta and auto club with that new package just kind of see how they go practice Times, um, as you'll see, is probably weighed a little bit less in the one lap times just because of the drafting style and the practices gives us maybe a little bit of false rating. Um, we've seen some Chevys up top not do so well in the race. So I'm kind of taking some uh, weight off those one lap times and put a little bit more weight, as you can see here, on the 10 lap averages and then the qualifying um, differential. That's kind of your place differential indicator there. Guys that have good, you know, practice two, which was the first practice on Saturday, was rained out. So we've only got the one practice post-qualifying to look at. Um, so there is this qualifying practice differential is just the difference between practice three time and qualifying time. With that, let's get in and look at some core plays for this week. Kyle Busch at the top. He's red hot. He has finished sixth or better. Um, in all the races. This is the point standings right now. This is from RacingReference.info. Um, Kyle Busch, he's the only one that's got five top fives. He's the only one with six top tens in races. And if we go and look at his results from the Atlanta Fontana, maybe not the greatest for him. Um, sixth in Atlanta, or sorry, uh, looking at Las Vegas. Third in Las Vegas. He won in Fontana. So really good with the new package. Definitely going to be a core driver for me this week. Up next, we got Brad Kozlowski starting 12th, so that's going to give us some place differential value. And while he was only 19th in the third practice, um, which was final practice there on Saturday, just ha just ended here about an hour or two ago, um, he was fourth in 10 lap averages. So definitely looking at him. Again, the guys in green are going to be my core drivers in my player pool this week. Blue are going to be some guys that have some GPP exposure to, and then yellow is going to be my value plays. Red are guys that I am fading. I will go over those. Um, guys as well. So Kevin Harvick stands out next on my list. He is fifth cheapest out of this group, which I really like um, on DraftKings. He started in 23rd. He showed top 10 speed in that final practice, including 10 lap averages. So definitely uh, looking at him as a core play. Um, he def I think he's, you know, his floor is going to be a top 10 and, uh, you know, his upside is always a win. So starting 23rd, I think it makes a lot of sense. Ryan Blaney, Probably more to the GPP side of things, but I did list him as a core play just because he has started 13th, showed top five speed. He's really come along lately. We'll go and look at uh, Blaney's last race. He started out his first four 
or three races of the season outside the top 20, and he's put top fives together in each of his last three races. So definitely looking at Blaney and Kozlowski as the leaders of that Penske group. Uh, Logano in there, you know, for GPPs as well. Kurt Busch stands out. He's actually number one in my overall rankings uh, post-qualifying when I put my weights together. He is starting 30th this week and showed top five speeds. Um, kind of that qualifying, it's it's still a little bit of a, excuse the, pardon my words, I guess, pardon my French, um, bit of a shit show right now. NASCAR's definitely going to have to fix the qualifying again. Um, Kurt Busch got caught up. You know, so he's going to be starting 30th, but showed top five speed. Same goes for Kyle Larson, starting 22nd. He did make the second round, but didn't make it out of the second round. Showed top 10 speeds in one lap time, and then was third behind Kurt Busch in those 10 lap averages in that final practice. So definitely looking at those teammates together this week. And uh, if you're doing team stacks, that's up there as one of my number one, from a points per dollar perspective, definitely number one, 95 and 9200 on DraftKings, those two. Boyer and Elliott I got as GPP plays only just because Elliott's been really good here. He started in third, showed speed outside top 10 in that final practice. They're going to have to make some adjustments um, in the race to find that top 5, top 10 speed, but he's been good here, so I think he's going to be lower owned as well. And with that uh, previous success, I think he's going to do well. We're going to go ahead and just have a look at his two races with the new package. So he was ninth at Las Vegas and 11th at Fontana. So nothing too great. So that's kind of why I got him listed as a GPP. Clint Boyer, um, if you've seen some interviews, he was very unhappy with qualifying once again. Um, he'll start 25th. He didn't make it in to that second round. Didn't really show in much speed in practices there as well. So he's going to be GPP, but a little bit lower. I like Elliott a little more than Boyer this week, even with that place differential that Boyer gives you. Eric Elmerol stands out as a core play. Didn't unload off the truck very well. 26th in opening practice. Qualified 21st, but then made some big adjustments. 15th in practice three, final practice there. And then he was 10th in 10 lap average. I think they're, they've made adjustments and they're going to be back up there as a top 10 car. So starting 21st makes a lot of sense at 8,400, 10.5 on FanDuel. Staying away from Denny Hamlin this week, um, he hasn't been good here. He's been very up and down, a lot of finishes outside of 30th, and he's getting kind of gives you that uh, negative place differential value. I like other guys around him, as you can see, so I'm not going to have exposure to everyone, so he's definitely one I'm going to be going away from. Very close with Martin Trex Jr. haven't quite decided on him yet. Johnson and Dillon, just because they're both starting top five, I don't think they're top five cars. I think they're more like around 10th. Um, Austin Dillon, more on that you know, 10th to 15th, even, you know, the downside's even worse for him there. So definitely fading them. Um, same story with Suarez and Byron starting top five. I think they're top 10, top 15, top 20 cars, somewhere in there is the downside. So uh, avoiding them. Same with Daniel Hamrick. And then down at the bottom, looking at the value plays this week, uh, there's a few that stand out to me, and we'll look at them for a few different reasons. Um, Paul Menard stands out just because he started in 14th, showed some top 10 speeds, more for GPPs, um, but I, I don't mind him. He's in a little bit better car. He's in uh, it's Penske equipment that he's running there. So um, the reason I got him yellow instead of blue. Busher and DeBenedetto are going to be like my pivots. I'm not going to have a whole lot of exposure to them in GPP formats, but I'm not going to fade them either. David Reagan is going to be one of my favorite in the 38 car. Started in 28th. Didn't show a ton more speed better than that starting position. 22nd and 10 lap averages was good. I think, you know, his ceiling's probably a 20th place finish. Uh, floor is probably like that 25, 26th place finish. And just going and looking at how he has done so far this year, there's a couple things that stand out. Las Vegas, he was 28th. Fontana, he was 25th. So he looks like, you know, pretty much a 25th place car. Um, here at Texas, and we'll look at his uh, history here as well, 24th, 23rd. So top 25 finishes in each, both races last year. So stands out for the price as a, as a solid play that uh, you could even use in cash games at 6K, 4,500 fan. It gives you a lot of room to go up and get um, two, playing some stars and scrubs, getting two of the elite guys this week. Ross Chastain, the guy that raced every race. If you have been watching NASCAR this year, he has been in every single truck, Xfinity, and Cup race this year, and actually done quite well. Um, he started in 35th this week. We'll go look at his success at Las Vegas. 
uh, 33rd, Fontana was 28th, so it looks like about a you know a 30th place car starting 33rd, but at that price, 5600 4K on FanDuel again, Stars and Scrubs. Um, if you're doing cash, Stars and Scrubs, I like Reagan more than Chastain, Chastain more on the GPP side of things this week being close in that same price range. And then Parker Kligerman stands out to me as well, even cheaper on both sites. Starting 33rd, um, he was 23rd in final practice, 29th in 10 lap averages. You know, he was very close in speed to those cars right, you know, two, three, four spots in front of him. So that was that was good to see as well. And then just kind of looking at his races so far this year, he raced Las Vegas, he was 31st. And then here at Texas, very limited sample size with Kligerman in the Cup Series here, but he's raced Texas twice um, back in 2014, so not really relevant. Um, he was overheating. In a, he was in a different car. He was in the number 30. In the 96, in the same car he's in, 96. Um, last year in the playoffs, he finished 31st. So he looks like about a 31st, 32nd, 33rd place car. I've got uh, all these other guys red, so I do think uh, Darrell Wallace Jr., uh, Bubba, Michael McDowell, Ty Dillon, I've all I've got them all as fades just because they're starting 15th, 10th, and 9th. I, I don't think any of them are top 15 cars. Um, Wallace is probably the closest to a top 15 car. Um, maybe go with him. I'm probably going to switch him here actually to GPP because I think a 15th place finish would be enough to get him value at 5,500 on DraftKings, 4,500 on FanDuel, and I think a lot of people will just because of the place differential value go to Chastain, Reagan, and even Kligerman as well. So I think Wallace is a nice pivot off those guys. He showed some, you know, top 10 speed, and they talked about on the radio, his crew chief was on the radio yesterday, and they said uh, they're, they, they feel like they're about a 15th, 16th place car, so I think that's enough value for him with that price tag, even losing five place differential points. So that covers my picks for this week. If you have any questions, make sure to jump into either the Rotor Pros or the Daily Fantasy Sports Rankings chat room. Um, I'll be in there pretty much for the rest of today, uh, leading up to lineup lock tomorrow morning. You can also hit me up on Twitter at, at Jaeger underscore bombs nine. You can also leave your comments below in the YouTube here in the YouTube video. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe the chat to the channel. We have a lot coming down the line. Um, a lot of sports going on all here at once. Crazy time of year. With that, let's go make some successful lineups and see some green screens. Good luck, everyone.